Hello, my name is Will Dean. I am the Forest Author, and today I want to talk about audiobooks. It is great to see you again. I gotta say, I love audiobooks. Do you like audiobooks? Do you read audiobooks? Do you buy audiobooks? As a reader, I find audiobooks fantastic. Audiobooks are a big thing thing these days you know you can you can borrow them from libraries they're available very very easily on your phones and on your tablets but I used to listen to them 15 years ago on a discman um, I love audiobooks I used to buy them on CD CD compact disc and I wanted to share some thoughts about audiobooks and I wanted to give you a few suggestions about audiobooks that I think are beautifully narrated so what do I love about audiobooks? I think it comes down to the fact that being told a story, that oral storytelling tradition, is so powerful, you know? You almost go back to being a kid, being told a story around a campfire, or being told a story by a parent sitting at the foot of your bed. It's a magical feeling. You kind of feel safe and you feel transported to that other world, whether that's a thriller or it's romance fiction or it's literary fiction set in Pakistan, doesn't matter, It's it has that kind of transporting quality. And I love audiobooks because I tend to read a lot and I get sent, I'm very lucky to be sent a lot of proofs, otherwise known as arcs or galleys, uh, by publishers. So I probably get about between five and 10 a week at the moment. And they're physical copies, they're, they're actual books, but then are not on sale yet. They're normally on sale six months down the road. And I read, a, I read a lot of those proofs. I read as many as I can, really. When I'm not reading a physical proof, I often read an audiobook. I often have an audiobook on the go in the car at any one time. I generally listen at one and a quarter speed or one speed. I'm not somebody who can listen at double speed or triple speed. I just find that uh, too much, you know. But one, one and a quarter, that's fine. I listen to books when I'm on a long walk, when I'm on a hike. As long as it's somewhere where there's no bears around and wolves, then I'm happy to have an audio book in. If there are bears around, the earplugs come out. If I'm on a long car journey, and in Sweden car journeys can be quite long, it's a big old country, I love to have an audio book. I remember I picked up an old banger about five years ago from up in Värmland actually, where my books Dark Pines and Red Snow are set. and. That drive probably took me, I think it took me five hours to drive there. I sold the car that I drove up in and then it took me five hours to drive back. I, I swapped a car which was I think 22 years old for a car which was 19 years old. No real price difference. There, were, there was not a lot of money to change hands here. And I listened to The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters and I think that's like a long audio book and I listened to all of it on the way up and on the way back. It was fun, it was great. I love an audiobook. I listen to an audiobook when I am cutting my grass. I have a little tractor thing. Uh, my, I don't have a lawn. I have a field. I have like a bog clearing, a swamp, very rough grass with lots of like snakes and frogs and stuff. And I have a tractor to cut it because it's just, it's, just, it's not really a grass. And I always have my earphones in listening to an audiobook. It takes me about four hours to cut all the grass. You know, that's a third of an audiobook. I always go for unabridged. I think most audiobooks are unabridged. That's the way to go. That means that the, the actual script, the actual narrative hasn't been messed around with or shortened. And some people say, don't you find that your mind wanders when you're reading an audiobook and you miss a whole passage? And I say, yes, and that is a good thing. You know, as a writer, I want my mind to wander. So yeah, I'm reading an audiobook. Sometimes my mind wanders. I think about a thing, a scene, a story idea, a character idea. I'll make a note of that idea, if it's a good idea, and then I'll just go back, you know, half an hour before, I'll rewind. Rewind, is that what you call it, rewind? Yeah, I'll go back and, and read the, the passage that I missed. Something I, I love about audiobooks is when they match the book itself to a fantastic narrator. That is something I really, really enjoy. The first audiobook that I read where I fell in love with the narration, with the voice, was The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway, which is narrated by Donald Sutherland. And this guy has a great voice. I mean, he has a really great voice. That was, I read that probably, probably like 
17, 18 years ago. And back then I was reading a lot of old white dudes. That's mainly what I was reading. And those old white dudes, you know, they were, some of them were great writers and some of them wrote really good books, but I read uh, far too many of those old white dudes. I have a much more open attitude to reading now. I, I try and read books written by writers from all backgrounds. Anyway, Old Man and the Sea. Short book, Donald Sutherland's narration is absolutely perfect for the book. It's exquisite. I could hear it over and over again. I have it on CD, compact disc, which is the kind of thing that will play on this antique hi-fi stereo system, which I bought on Tottenham Court Road 20 years ago, and it's still going strong. So what other audiobooks can I recommend in terms of the narrator? Okay, next one is one of my favorite books, probably one of your favorite books too. You can see that this copy has been well read. The Secret History by Donna Tart. Look at this old thing. Such a good book. Such a good book. And the audiobook, if I remember correctly, is narrated by Donna Tart herself. Donna Tart. How cool is that? And her voice is absolutely perfect for this book, for any book, but especially for this book. Thoroughly recommend you try out the audiobook version. I remember I read The Secret History a way back, and then about five years ago, I reread it on audiobook while I was building window frames for my house. The house came uh, in Swedish style, kind of flat pack IKEA style on the back of a truck. Crane put it all together in different pieces, but the inside was very rough and unfinished, so I had to build the window frames myself on the inside. So I did that, and it took me, I don't know, it took me a while. And I had like, I had my ladder and my saw, my circular saw and my paints and my spackle. I had my, uh, my sandpaper and my measuring tape and my spirit level and all this stuff. And I was listening to The Secret History while I was building these window frames. It was it's such a good memory. I love doing things that are physical and not that taxing on my mind and listening to a good audio book. When I was building the outside steps around my house, which was tons and tons and tons of stones and, and mixing concrete myself on like a board and lugging around sand and gravel and stuff. When I was doing that, I was listening to, I was listening to The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I still have great memories of that. When I was painting the outside of my house, I was listening to Home Going by Yagi Asi, which is an incredible book. A hugely ambitious debut, a kind of multi-generational epic saga that covers different continents, different families, different stories, all woven together magically. Fantastic book. No Country for Old Men. Let me find out who narrates this. Please hold on. Okay, No Country for Old Men, the audiobook is narrated by a guy called Tom Stetschult. Stetschulter? St Stetschulte? Stetschult. I apologize if I have mangled your name, Tom, but you do a brilliant job with No Country for Old Men. Just flicking through my audio books on my phone right here. I'll list a couple really, really fast that I love. Forensics by Val McDermott. The audio book is brilliant. Patricia Highsmith, Deep Water. Fantastic audio book. The Dry by Jane Harper. Superb. The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. Yes. The Sellout by Paul Petey, yes. Eileen by Otessa Moshfeg, yes. The Driver's Seat by Muriel Spark, great audiobook, great book. Dark Pines by Will Dean, okay, that's embarrassing. This is um, narrated by Maya Lind, who is a Swedish actress, and she does such a good job with Tuba's voice. Stiff by Mary Roach, a non-fiction book about cadavers, which is superb. Tall Oaks by Chris Whittaker, great narration. Reservoir 13 by John McGregor. Under the Skin, Michelle Faber. The Outrun by Amy Liptrop. Who's that narrated by? Okay, Dark Matter by Michelle Paver. If you want a scary story, a, a kind of speculative ghost story, a really unsettling book, read this. It's narrated by Jeremy Northam. Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn, narrated by Lisa Ross. Okay, so that was just a few quick fire suggestions. Also, Shirley Jackson's audiobooks are fantastic. The narration is superb. 
Uh, what am I wearing on my wrist? Is that what you asked? I'm wearing this. It is a German chronograph from the 70s. It's a Meister Anker. These are not expensive. These were not expensive when they were made. They're not expensive now. Colorful dial. Absolutely love it. I think I paid less than $200 for this. Meister Anker. Okay, so that's audiobooks. I love an audiobook. Thank you. This has been Will Dean. Please do subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. I will see you again soon in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.